well, welcome everyone to the latest installment of our virtual Tech Talk series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Libby, the one tap reading app um, from Overdrive. So, Overdrive is our ebook and audiobook vendor, and they have this amazing, very modern app called Libby uh, that um, a lot of our patrons and users like yourself just absolutely love. Um, as a little introduction, my name is Casey. I'm the digital literacy librarian here for Martin County and I'm able to bring you some of these virtual tech talks that we've been doing since May or June of 2020. Um, anything from cloud computing to, um, let's see, we did how to, which device should I buy? At, we had an appy hour edition. Um, a couple weeks from now, we're going to talk about 3D printing. We'll be talking about augmented reality and virtual reality later in February. So um, it's been a super fun series, and we really love that you guys are joining us from all over the country, too. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I'm also joined by Haley. Hi, I'm Haley Bernhard. I'm a library specialist at the Blake Library. Yes, and Haley, as we mentioned before we started recording, we'll be moderating the chat. So anybody that is just joining, um, go ahead and type your questions into the chat feature as they come up. And then if they don't get answered over the course of the session, um, we'll pause periodically and Haley will ask the questions and I'll, I'll answer them. Uh, any questions that we can't answer today, I love to follow up with people. Um, so expect, um, I do have pen and paper handy and I know Haley's a great note taker too. Definitely. Um, actually I don't have a pen, so I've got it's behind covered. me. It's behind me. Um, <laughs> thanks. So we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so just a quick overview of today's session. Um, we do have a lot to cover today. Um, Libby's a wonderful app and it's very user friendly. Um, but it's got a lot of features. And so one of the great things about a session like this, um, while I have no doubt that you might be able to navigate Libby pretty easily, um, there might be some features that you didn't even know were in there. And so our hope is to kind of get through most of these features today. Um, I'm gonna start by talking about Libby compatible devices, all right? Libby doesn't work with every uh, device and so we'll start with that um, and I won't be offended if anybody has to drop off when they learn that their device may not be compatible uh, but of course you're welcome to stay too um, and then we'll actually go into a live demonstration for I'll show you how to log into Libby for the first time if you've never done that um, we'll talk about searching and browsing the library's digital collection then we'll kind of switch gears and once you've checked out a book uh, how do you read and or listen to any books? We'll talk about how to manage your holds. Um, if you're a library power user, you know that's kind of an art form, a very special art form. Uh, and then we'll finish up with setting some of your preferences. Um, I forgot to mute my video, so I'm gonna go ahead and mute my video so that we can focus on the screen. Okay, so that's a little bit about, or that's an overview of what we're gonna cover. Um, so this is the little Libby icon here. Um, Libby, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but she's got this cute little blue hair bow that also looks like a little bookmark. Um, and that icon is really simple because we'll actually see that a few times throughout the app. Um, but basically it's the one tap reading app. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Overdrive from either other libraries that you have memberships to. Um, or when the Martin County Library System used to have a subscription to Overdrive. Uh, it's been over three years now. Um, and when, they, when we had Overdrive previously, Libby was not a thing. Libby wasn't created or developed by Overdrive yet. Um, Libby has a lot of very modern features that um, support modern technology. Um, and so while the legacy Overdrive app still does exist and can be used on some devices. Uh, Libby is much more geared towards how we use books nowadays um, and how we use our phones and tablets. Um, it was built with all of the modern features and mo compatibility with modern technology. So little things like, you know, syncing with the Bluetooth in your car is much easier now. 
uh, graphic novels, which have seen a lot of popularity in recent years. You can't read those on the Legacy Overdrive app. You can read those in Libby. Um, so that's kind of why we're so excited to bring Libby to everyone. We're excited to have Overdrive again, and we're also excited um, that Libby is such a great app. Um, to download Libby, there's two places. You can download Libby, Libby if you have an Apple device from the Apple App Store, and if you have an Android device, you can use it on Google Play. Um, here is where I did want to talk a little bit about device compatibility. Um, so there's two app stores that you can download Libby from. Um, what you're not going to see on here is an app store for a Nook or um, the Amazon App Store, which is a Kindle Fire tablet. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the Kindle Paperwhites in just a minute. Actually, let me turn my camera on because I do just want to show you. Um, so from the Apple App Store, you, if you have an iPhone or iPad, you can absolutely download Libby. From the Android Google Play Store, if you have an Android phone or tablet, you can download Libby. The Kindle Fire tablet specifically does, is not compatible with Libby, but I want to make a distinction between a Kindle Fire tablet and a Kindle e-reader, a Kindle Paperwhite e-reader. Um, so I brought in my Kindle just to show you all. Um, and it, the Kindle Paperwhite e-readers are the black and white, I'm having to wake it up, the black and white, white e-readers that you can read um, outside in the sun. Um, if you have one of these, Libby is compatible with this. And I'll show, we won't spend a lot of time on it, but I'll show you kind of how to, how to get your Kindle e-reader set up. Um, I have a Paperwhite, another model is called uh, Kindle Oasis. Um, so if you have those devices, we're very excited to share with you that uh, Libby is compatible with those too, and OverDrive is compatible. Um, if you have a device that's not compatible, you still work with OverDrive. Um, if you're not sure, um, you check out our website, give us a call, respond to my email when I email you next week or my email from last night, um, and I'd be happy to send you a link to how to get to see if your specific device is compatible. Um, with OverDrive, the difference is, is OverDrive is more of the collection and Libby is the app that we're going to be talking about today that accesses the collection. All right, so just because you don't have one of these devices doesn't mean you can't access our digital content. It just means you're not going to use Libby to do so. So with that being said, um, let me go ahead and dive into Libby. All right, so here, Haley, I'm gonna need your help in telling me, um, let me mute my video, and I would like to share my screen. All right, and can you see that, Haley? My yeah, screen can share? see it perfectly. Is it just the little window? It is. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Okay, so when you first download Libby, either from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store on your device, um, this is gonna be the first thing that you see. Um, you are gonna need a library card to access the library's collection. Um, and so do you have a library card? You're just gonna click yes. Um, if not, please give us a call or apply online. We want you to have that library card ASAP. Um, now, since Libby can be used with multiple libraries, you do have to look up our library, the Martin County Library System. There's a few different ways to do that, but I would definitely recommend just searching. It's the easiest and you can search in a few different ways. Um, if I typed in Blake, I could find the library. If I typed in Palm City, I could find the library. Um, but I, if zip code is ever an option, I really like zip code because I don't, if I can't make a typo. I can't um, type in the wrong town. Um, and so I'm just going to search by zip code and then there is the Martin County Public Library. Once you find our library, you can click on it and it's going to bring you to this page where you're, you'll enter your library account details. Um, again, if you don't have a library card, you can do that there. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and click enter library account details and then on the back of your beautiful um, fish library card or turtle library card, we have the long 
number that starts with 405, you're going to type in that number with no spaces. Hopefully I got it right. Um, and it's right underneath the barcode as it says here. Once you've done that, you can click next. And then it's going to ask you for your PIN. And PIN is still fairly new for us at Martin County, um, but try the last four digits of your phone number. Um, if you're not sure if that doesn't work, go ahead and give us a call because you might have set yourself a different PIN, but most of our PINs are going to be, by default, the last four digits of our phone number. And then once you've typed that in, you'll go ahead and click Done. From there, it connects with our system to make sure like, yes, this is Casey using this library card. If you wanted to name a card, you can. You'll also have the option to do this a little, I'll show you where to do it at the end of today's session. Uh, but this is really great if you are a caregiver and you're trying to keep track of your personal card and somebody else's card. Um, if you have kids, um, a spouse that you share cards with, um, just to keep the, those two cards separate, kind of understanding which one's which. Um, but I'm going to leave mine as Libby Demo for now and just click Next. All right, let me make this a little bit wider. The width of yours is going to vary depending on um, how wide your mobile device's screen is or whatever your reader is. Um, I usually do mine on my phone, so I'm used to kind of this tiny column, but some of you might have tablets with wider screens. Uh, but this is going to be the general layout of Libby once you're signed in. Uh, you're going to see the Martin County Library System logo front and center. And then I'm going to actually have you look down here at library and shelf. Okay, and we're going to talk about these. This is basically our outline for today's session. First, we're going to talk about library, which is like walking in the door of the library. It's the entire collection that's available to you to browse, to search, um, to look at, you know, displays that our staff has put together. So that's all going to be on the library section. Once we've kind of gone through the details of those, we're going to flip over to the shelf. Um, and the shelf is more uh, your books, your holds, your tags. So anything that you've personally um, commented on or made a hold for, uh, that's going to be where you'll find that on your personal shelf. But let's go back to the library. Um, and then just generally, we're going to start with search. We'll talk about preferences. And then we'll talk about browsing with the explore option. So those are kind of the things we're going to cover. Before we go too far into that, though, I did just want to draw your attention. Um, just like if you were to walk in the door of the library, you're going to see some displays on this front page here. You'll have some options to click and see what's new, what's popular, um, anything that's newly added might be a section here, uh, popular titles for the month. So you're gonna have all different kinds of options. Um, some curated content, just like if you were to see a display at um, your local library branch um, that the staff kind of puts together for fun. Uh, so just know that that's kind of your home screen. I'm trying to scroll all the way down so you can kind of get an idea. Um, yeah, so these are more the curated content. Uh, but I want to go back up to the top because that very first one is one of our newer features that we just added in the last month or two. Uh, and that's the Lucky Day Collection. So the Lucky Day Collection is very similar to our Martin's Most Wanted program. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, it's basically... Um, very popular titles that the library buys extra copies of so that um, you don't have to sit on a holds list for six months before getting a copy. It's first come, first serve. And so they don't fulfill your holds. But if you happen to open up your Libby app uh, and see the collection and it's something that you want, you can borrow it, even though you might be 50th in line for it if you wait in the holds queue. Oh, yeah. So a lot of these are the most popular titles in our collection, um, and that's what that lucky day is. I will say it's only a seven day lending period, just like our Martin's Most Wanted. Um, the major difference is there are no fines for digital books because uh, once you check out a title, uh, you have it for 
in the Lucky Day collection, it's seven days. Uh, other titles, the default is going to be 14 days. Um, and then once your title is expired, it just disappears off of your device. So that's how digital book lending works, um, for better or for worse. Uh, no fines, but sometimes you're not quite done with that book, uh, but just something to keep in mind as you explore. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it though, because I wanna talk about using the search function um, first, because many of you probably have an idea of a book you're looking for, and so to search for it, we're gonna start in the upper left corner. Uh, that magnifying glass is a universal symbol for search. And in Libby, you can search by either author or title, or even series you can search for. Um, so I'm going to search for Elin Hildebrand, uh, which is great. And it, as you can see, I type in the first few letters and it's trying to guess, which is I really appreciate because I can never remember how to spell her name. Um, so once I type that in, I'm just going to click on the search result that I want. And then here is going to be everything matching Elin Hildebrand. As I scroll here, one of the things that I love about Libby is the visual nature of these of the app. Um, it's so beautiful. I definitely judge books by their covers. I know I'm a terrible librarian, but um, it's wonderful just to be able to have something catch your eye and to be able to browse just like you would in the library. Um, I do want to draw your attention to the fact that Libby has both ebooks and audiobooks. And the way you can tell the difference between the two in Libby is an ebook is simply going to be this little um, book cover right here that I have, Summer People, Summer People. Whereas an audiobook is going to have a little icon that says audio, and it looks like the little earbuds that you would buy from Apple or somewhere. Um, so that's how you can tell the difference between an ebook and an audiobook. The other thing that I wanted to mention, let's see, I'm going to scroll up a little bit and see if I can get two. There we go. All right, so winter storms and winter stroll. Um, over here on the left hand side, these are both ebooks. I can tell because they don't have the little audio icon with the earbuds. Uh, but Winter Storms is available to borrow, and I know that because it says borrow right there. Uh, Winter Stroll, if I'm browsing and I see this option to place hold, it means that all the copies we, the library has, are currently checked out. Uh, but just like you would a regular print book, you can place a hold and then you will be in the hold queue. Uh, the other little um, symbol to be on the lookout for that indicates the same thing are these little, they look like library cards or the Libby icon for library cards, which is like the little rectangle. But the bar, if anything has a borrow symbol, it's going to have that little plus sign next to it, meaning if I click on it, I can borrow it right now. And it'll also give you a little information about how many copies the library has. Just click off of that or tap off of that to get rid of it. But if something isn't available and there's a whole, you need to place a hold, instead of the little plus symbol, you're going to instead see a little clock. And then it's a little tricky to see, but it's a, actually, it looks like a little calendar on the library card. And if you look real closely, you can see there's actually two white dots on that calendar. And those white dots will indicate to you just at a very quick glance how long the holds line is for that title. If you want more information, you can just tap on that icon and it'll tell you, okay, there are two copies the library has and three people waiting. So you're going to be number four in line and that'll take about four weeks to get to you. Now, just as a, you know, disclaimer, this is a general uh, estimate. People can suspend holds and we'll talk about that. But just if you want a general idea about how long it is. Um, you'll have that there just at a quick glance and then for more detail you'll just tap on it. If you wanted to place a hold you would simply place hold. Okay right from there um, it's going to tell you you are placing a hold and it's going to give you the same information as before. I'm going to tap place hold just to show you and there we have it. All right, so pretty easy to place a hold um, 
And now you can see it's on your hold shelf. If we go back to the search result, it's on our hold shelf. Uh, and now funny enough, it's telling us three weeks. We'll talk about managing holds in a little bit, but I did just want to give you a general idea. And this is all just from the main search results page. Um, as you're browsing and you see something that maybe you want to investigate a little bit more, you can click on the cover and then this will give you a bit more description and details about the book. You'll still have that borrow option right there if you decide you do want to borrow, you don't have to go back. Um, the great thing is that in a series it will tell you, okay, which book is this in this series? Is it also available as an audiobook? And if so, you could click on that if you'd rather listen to it. Um, so just if you want more details, just know that you've got that option uh, once you click on that book title, or book cover, excuse me. All right, I'm gonna go back, because there's one other thing I wanna talk about uh, before we move on. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, we talked about clicking on the book cover, borrow, if you wanted to read a sample of that book or listen to a sample, if it's an audiobook, you have that option there. But the one other feature that I just want to explain are tags. Um, now tags are personal. So your tags, you're going to be the only person that sees your tags. They're not reviews. Um, but if you want like to organize your books um, or have different shelves, I know everybody has a slightly different system. Um, I do a, I'm doing a reading challenge this year. So as I find books in the collection, I might tag it as a future book I want to read with the name of my reading challenge. Um, so to add a tag, you can simply click tag. Um, some people use this pile of books as their to be read or their TBR pile, if you want to know book lingo. Um, so if you want to read something, a lot of people like to use that little bookshelf. If you want to rate it just for your own recollection, thumbs up or thumbs down. Again, it doesn't go anywhere outside of your device. Uh, your tags just stay with you. Um, then you've got those options there. And then if you wanted to create your own tag, um, you can. There's a few different options here that they have for suggestions, but maybe you are looking to tag all of your cookbooks. For example, you can just type in cookbooks. And now as you find cookbooks that you want to read, your tag will be there and you can simply tag other books as cookbooks or whatever tag you create again. I'll just tag a few so you can see them a little bit later. All right, so that is the tag feature. I'm going to scroll back up to the top um, because I do just want to quickly talk about preferences. Um, now, as a reminder, we talked about that Libby has ebooks and audiobooks. And for this one author, there's 15 ebooks and 15 audiobooks available in our collection right now. Uh, maybe you're not an audiobook listener and you don't even want to see search results for any audiobooks because you just scroll right by them anyway, or they get you excited and you don't want to be misled. Um, you might want to set a preference. Uh, and to do that, you'll simply tap preferences. And then there's a few different options you'll see here. The one I was talking about was format. And so, oops, I did that kind of fast, sorry. Um, I'm just going to tap books. And now if I set my format preference to only show me books, it's not going to show me audiobooks or magazines. Um, so just something to keep in mind, languages, audience. Um, and then when you tap apply preference, you'll see now I have that little preference number one next to my preferences. And here it's only showing us those 15 books. None of the audio books are going to be in our search results now, right? And preferences are what we call sticky. And the reason they're called sticky is that because that preference is going to stay or stick until I change it again. So you'll see here now if I go back to library, and I can do that either by clicking, tapping library in the upper left corner or the bottom left. It's going to both bring me to the same place. Now you'll see that pre that sticky preference, sure enough, is still there. Okay, so those preferences stay until you change it to a different preference. I'm gonna actually change it back to audiobooks, or back to any, excuse me. 
and apply preferences. And now you'll see I have no preferences, but the ability to add preferences from this screen as well. All right. So now that we've talked about searching and we're gonna pause after this, um, we've talked about searching and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about browsing the collection and then we'll take a little break for questions. I like to browse. Sometimes I am looking for a specific book or a specific author, but a lot of times I just like to walk in the door of the library or browse the shelves or browse the displays. And so that's going to be where you'll tap on the explore button. Um, when you tap on the explore, you're going to see a few different guides here. Um, and these think of as more just like rooms in the library. like. For example, if you were to walk in the front door of the Blake Library and ask for the children's section, we would send you upstairs uh, to the second floor where all of the children's books are for you to browse. Um, it's kind of like that. The guide is very similar to that in terms of if you wanted to browse the children's titles, you could tap on this kid's guide. Um, we have other guides for other things, but I did also want to point out uh, the one other new feature that we've added uh, in the last month or two, uh, two months probably, is magazines. Um, back in November, well, over the summer, the library applied for a grant for CARES funding, the uh, pandemic relief funding, and we did receive that grant and the money we decided to spend it on is to purchase digital magazines. Um, when our buildings were closed and or we were quarantining our magazines, um, they don't circulate. We wanted people to be able to have access to those magazines still and so we wanted to provide that access digitally. Um, so that is a fun new thing that we have and really great even in a time when a lot of magazines are going to digital only. Um, so Oprah's Magazine O, for example, is digital only. So we're no longer going to get the print copies. And so we're very happy to be able to offer, uh, at least for now, um, the copy of, the digital copy of, of magazines like O. Um, it is grant funded, so it may not be around forever. Um, but the other great thing about magazines is that we have a multi-use license for the magazines. So unlike ebooks or audiobooks, where you know we have three copies and only three people can check them out at the same time, um, all of us could check out the same magazine and borrow it for a week or two, um, all at the same time. So we don't have those same limitations with magazine content. So. Um, if you've ever been curious about a particular magazine, I know I've been looking through a few of the cooking magazines recently, um, just for fun, because it's not something I would ever buy, but um, that, that is where you can access it there through Explore. Let me just go back and do that again, through Explore, and then this magazine guide. Of course, you can search for a magazine title as well. Uh, but the other thing I know people like to do is browse by subject, like you might in a bookstore, for example. Um, so I'm going to tap on subjects and just show you that you can um, browse different types of things like suspense novels or young adult fiction, or maybe you really like biographies or humor. Um, you can browse by topic there. Uh, personally, I know whenever I go on a road trip, I like to listen to an audiobook, and oftentimes I find myself, my favorite genre is historical fiction, and so the night before my trip, I might realize, oh no, I haven't picked out a book yet to listen to, and so this would be a great opportunity just to browse through the collection. Um, you'll see the same information we did as when we searched, and it's the exact same layout. Right, so whichever, whichever way you're getting to your search results, whether you're browsing or searching, uh, you'll find it all very um, similar in the presentation. Now, in, in the example that I posed is my road trip tomorrow morning. Um, I do wanna listen to an audiobook. Uh, we talked about preferences and I don't wanna set my preference because personally I listen to both audiobooks and read eBooks on my Kindle Paperwhite. Um, so I don't want to set that preference because I don't want to have to constantly turn that off and on again. Um, but I do want to mention this refine tool on the right hand side. If I tap on that, I can refine just these search results. Okay, it won't be sticky. 
um, to only show me right this minute, only show me audiobooks, okay? Because I want to listen. Um, and now I'm looking at only audiobooks that I can download to listen to. Um, and in my case, I'm going on my trip tomorrow, so I don't want to wait 14 weeks for this copy. I'm actually already on hold for that. Um, so maybe I want to change it to only showing me things that are available now. All right, so you can kind of play around with the refine tool and refine your search in different ways, but just so you know uh, what that feature is um, and how it works. If you find a book you want to borrow, um, you can just tap borrow. Maybe you want to read a little bit more about it. Just like before, we'll tap on the cover, scroll. The only difference in this case is going to be the fact that we can see that this is an audiobook, and instead of reading a sample, we would play a sample. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you for you audiobook listeners, you know this is a big deal, is that it gives you the duration. Okay, so you can get an idea about how long a book is. And then otherwise the, the features are the same. Okay, so I actually let me go ahead and borrow this just to show you what that process looks like. I'm gonna tap borrow. Um, just so you know, um, the default setting is gonna be 14 days for anything not in the Lucky Day collection, the seven day collection. Um, you can change that to seven days if you want to. We don't usually advise people uh, to do that because you can always return it early and I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, but just so you know, if you accidentally tap on something or click on something and not sure how that happened, um, maybe that's what where it was. But um, you can leave it at 14 day. That is the default. You can't actually change that on your end. We, we, we have that. There is no preference for that in Libby. We set that at the library. And then once you decide you want it, you can just tap borrow. Great. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to our main library page. And let me just tap library. And Haley, I'm gonna pause here. I know we've just covered a lot in that library section, but um, were there any questions in the chat that came through? We don't have any questions quite yet, but just as a reminder, anyone can submit their questions using the chat function at the bottom of their screen. So awesome. no questions yet. <laughs> awesome, thanks so much, Haley. And um, yes, yeah, so as they come in, type them in. Um, we do try to answer them. The next section we're gonna talk about, we're gonna switch over to our shelf now. And the next section we're gonna talk about is our loan. So how to read the books we've checked it out, out and how to listen to the books we've checked out. Um, and then we'll pause again for questions after that. Um, so without any more waiting, let's go ahead and talk about loans. So just as a reminder, our library was access to all the library's collection and then our shelf is where we can find our individual interests. Um, and we've got Loans, which are going to be books that you have checked out to your card right now that you can read or listen to. We've got holds, which are books that you want to check out, but there aren't enough copies for you at the moment or you're waiting. Um, and then we've got those tags that we talked about and we'll cover holds and tags uh, next. Um, so with the loans, I'm going to tap on loans so you can kind of see what the loan shelf looks like. Um, you're going to see all of the books that you have checked out. Um, so you'll see I checked out for this demonstration. I did check out quite a few options here. Um, and I just want to go over kind of a few different things. I am going to show you. Let's do this. Actually, this is one of those lucky day. Um, it's also called uh, Skip the Line Loan. And it's got the little four leaf, looks kind of like a four leaf clover. Um, We'll go ahead and start with that one. It's that Bridgerton book, the books that the Bridgerton uh, TV show on Netflix is based off of. So we'll cover all of these options, but first thing we want to do is tap on read with. And here is where I want to encourage those of you with Kindle Paperwhites, uh, like the one I showed you that I have, the black and white e-reader. Um, you can use Libby to manage your holds, but if you want to actually read, read your books on your Kindle, 
e-reader, you would tap Kindle at this section. From there, I'm not gonna do it because you can't go back once you do it. Um, from there, you can, it's gonna push you through to amazon.com where you will sign in with your Amazon account, all right? Because your, your e-reader, your Kindle Paperwhite is connected to your Amazon account and Amazon actually manages it. Um, so if it pushes you through to Amazon and you're not sure why, um, that's completely normal. It won't make you buy it. Um, it's just kind of the process that, that it, it goes through. But since today's class is on Libby, I'm gonna go ahead and tap Libby. And then it's opening the app, that it's opening the book in the Libby app. Um, let me just kind of tap on the center of the screen to go over some of the basics of how to read in Libby. So you're gonna start with the cover, of course, and if you wanna scroll the page, you're simply gonna tap on the right hand side of the screen to turn the page to the right, just like you would if you were reading a physical book. All right, so I'll just go through and click through till we get to a couple pages. All right, so tap, tap. If you wanna go back, you're gonna tap on the left side of the screen. All right. And then one of the other features I'm gonna mention before we get into some of the settings is, um, let's see. Oh, sorry, this is kind of gruesome. <laughs> um, one of the things you can do is a long press on a word. So instead of tapping on a word, if I press and hold my finger on it and then let go, you're gonna have a few different options. Um, this will let you define a word. So if there's a word that you're not sure about, um, I use this feature more than I ever thought I would, um, to be quite honest. So that's a great feature to have um, and it'll give you the definition. I'm just gonna hide that right now. The other thing you can do is when you press and hold or do a long press on a word, you can then drag your finger down. And when you lift your finger off, you're gonna get those same search results. But if you wanted to highlight a certain passage, you could do that. Um, the one other feature that is kind of nice in Libby is when you press and hold or that long press. We talked about define and highlight, but also searching within a book. I know for books that have a lot of characters or that I get kind of lost in, I find myself using this feature as well too. Like, is this a new character or who exactly was this again? And I'll kind of be able to quickly go back and refresh my memory um, to remind myself of a certain person or a certain word. Uh, so just know that to do all that, you simply press and hold your finger on a word or drag it across um, the screen. And then when you release, you'll have those options available to you. All right, so the other thing that I wanna point out is the settings that are available. Um, so we talked about to turn the page, you're gonna tap on the right side of the screen or the left side to go back. Uh, but if you want to pull up your settings, you're gonna tap just right in the center of the screen. To get rid of them, just tap on it again and they'll disappear, okay? So to turn them on, tap in the middle. To turn them off, tap in the middle. Um, I wanna go through some of these together with you all. Um, the first one is gonna be this little piano key looking thing down at the bottom. And this is actually a way to navigate through the book and to get a big picture perspective. Um, so the darker lines that look like the uh, black keys on a keyboard are going to be the beginning of a new chapter. So if I tap on that, I want to quickly jump to a chapter. Um, I can do that as I can do that that way. And then um, if you wanted to jump forward by by a chapter, you also have this option. The next chapter is going to be 16 pages forward. I'll tap on that and it'll jump forward. Another way to navigate through chapters is if you tap, sorry, I did that kind of quick. If you tap on the word chapters, and it might say something different depending on what the chapter title is here, you can quickly access the table of contents to scroll through. Not a feature I use a ton because I just usually read one page at a time, uh, but just so you're aware of what that is and what that means. The other reason I like to show you that is any highlights uh, that you've made, you can quickly uh, visually identify right here as well. 
Okay, so one of the other features, so now we've talked about the features down at the bottom, um, but up in the upper right hand corner are some of the great things about having digital content. Um, you may or may not see this one little icon, this circle with the, it's, it's a book, book page with two columns. Depending on your screen width, again, mine's set to be a little wide right now. And so if I wanted to have two column, two column pages, oops, sorry, let me, there we go. Now you can actually see it. If I wanted to see my page as two columns, that's gonna be the feature to turn that to one or two columns. Um, if you have a smaller screen, like when I open books on my phone, it doesn't even give me that option because it's, it's too small of a screen to even make two columns. So if you're following along and not seeing that, that's probably why. The awesome feature that we love to tell people about, sorry, again, <laughs> my finger slipped, is this, um, the letter A, which lets you adjust the appearance. Uh, so I'm gonna tap on that A to bring up all of the appearance settings and the text scale is the feature that is very very helpful uh, because if you're a large print reader you can you know you might have a smaller selection in our print collection but with uh, digital you can make your device large print just like that um, so there are options for you to make your text larger or smaller uh, feel free to play around with that there's also some accessibility sizes which changes the the scale a little bit more depending on uh, your needs and what you what works best for you. Uh, I'm going to set mine pretty standard just for viewing today. There's also an option for lighting. Uh, the default is going to be bright, which is like a white background, but sometimes that blue tint is harsh for people, and so you might choose to have a slightly more muted sepia look or even dark mode. You know, the more science that goes into how much screen time we have and how it affects our sleep and our, our brain, um, dark mode is an alternative option for that. Um, you can also change, oh, sorry, let me change it back to bright at least for today's session. So we can all see, um, you can also change the font, okay? The font style, not just the size. I tend to stick with the publisher's default, but um, just know that that's an option for you. And then once you've got it to your liking, you can tap hide and that, that appearance option is gonna go away. All right, so we've got our columns, our appearance. Uh, this is another way to search within the book. When we searched before, we did a long press on a word that we were looking at, uh, but maybe the word we wanna search for isn't in there and so, trying to think of a word that I know is in this book. Let's try queen. Okay, so there we have any search results for the word queen. Uh, hey, again, so we yeah. had a patron ask if you could repeat the information on switching how many columns are in on the page. Yeah, sure. Um, so it does depend on your device um, and I can probably do it right now. So my screen right now is wide enough that I'm getting this this circle icon to the left of the A. Um, if I click on that, it's going to switch it to, kind of have to click off of it first, sorry. It's going to switch it to a two column screen. Um, some people might like it if you're on a tablet and have a larger screen and don't like flipping pages very much. Um, I know I'm, I'm one of those people. Uh, you can do that that way. And if okay. you want to keep it at one column, you'll just tap on it again. Okay. So just to reiterate, that, that icon may not appear if your screen is not particularly wide enough to allow for two columns. That's right. Thank you. And I just narrowed my window a little bit more to get, like, if you're on a phone, your screen might look like this. And there is no circle there to the left of the A now because the screen is too thin, too narrow to have two col to support two columns. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good question. And actually that was a recent discovery of mine. I don't know if that was an update. Libby did update in the last day or two, uh, but that was, I just learned that the last day or two myself. All right, and then last but not least, we talked about searching, but last but not least, any, um, tap 
off of this and tap back on it again. Any um, bookmarks that you've made? And to make a bookmark, there's just, on your screen, you can simply tap in the upper right corner and it'll add a little bookmark. And it, again, it looks like that Libby ribbon in her hair. Uh, so that's how you add a bookmark. And I'm just gonna scroll forward a little bit by tapping on the right hand side of my screen. And then to add a bookmark, you're just gonna tap in the upper right corner. To view all of your bookmarks, once you've done all that, you've, you'll tap in the middle of your screen to bring up all of your options around the outer edges. And then in the upper right corner, it's gonna give me kind of, it looks like several bookmarks on top of each other. I'm gonna tap on that. And then I can, it's another way of seeing my bookmarks and quickly going to anything that I've highlighted. So if you're in a book club or have a quote that you particularly like to remember and wanna quickly access it, um, that's where you can go to do that. And when you're done, you'll tap hide. All right, I'm just checking my notes to make sure we covered every, all the important stuff. And I know it's a lot too, and it's, again, it's pretty easy to navigate, but just kind of knowing these features are there, um, hopefully is helpful. To get out of a book, I'm gonna tap the back button in the upper left corner. And here I wanted to draw your attention to this orb in the middle. Um, we talked about library and we talked about shelf. But in the middle here, where the Libby icon was, the little girl with the ribbon, um, now it's gonna be the book that we were most recently in. Uh, and that's why Libby's called the One Tap Reading App, is because once you're in a book, you're, wherever you go, whether you're in the library or doing a search or in your holds, um, you're just one tap away from opening up your book to wherever you last were. So that's kind of another just little navigation tool once you've opened something. <clears throat> now, the other thing I wanted to mention, and we are gonna pause um, pretty shortly. Oh no, sorry, we're gonna do an audiobook demo before we pause too, so keep the questions coming. Um, but I did just wanna talk about, we clicked on open in Libby already. Um, let's talk about managing our loans. So sometimes, if like this book is due, I'm gonna do The Girl Who Wrote in Silk. I'm gonna manage that loan and tap on that. And you'll see here, if I finished it, I have the option to return early. Or um, if there's no one waiting to read it uh, and it's within three days of the due date, 72 hours officially, um, then I also have the option to renew that loan. Um, I don't have any options to renew. Let me just scroll through. No, I tried. I tried to get one timed perfectly for today, but it never works out that way. So um, you'll see it grayed out, but if you're ever curious if you can renew a loan or not, keep checking where it says manage loan. Um, I'm going to return this one early just so you can kind of see what that looks like. It looks very similar to the borrow screen. When I tap return, it's just going to disappear off of my device and I can go back to my loans by tapping loans in the upper left corner and now it's gone. All right. Um, so managing our loans, it will give you a general idea about your due date. You can always tap on it too. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And that is basically it. Um, you know, everybody manages manages their loans a little bit different, or their their what they have checked out. So uh, I have a lot checked out just because I was trying to get a few examples for you guys. But that is how you open books and manage your loan. I'm gonna go ahead and open an audiobook for us now. We actually checked this one out earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and open in Libby. It's that 14 day checkout period. So when I tap open in Libby, very similar to the audiobook experience, it's gonna kind of have that um, piano keyboard down here. And let me just scroll forward. These are probably very long chapters. Okay, and there's another one of those black keys indicating the chapter. And the difference is, is instead of pages, these are gonna be minutes down here. So how long have you listened to that? 
Of course, to play it, you're going to just press the play button. Um, you can go forwards or backwards 15 seconds. Sometimes I'll just tap, if I find myself spacing out, I'll just tap that a few times to go back a minute or so. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about is you can navigate forwards or backwards from chapters just like before. Oh, that's kind of confusing because it's the same length of chapter. Um, and then by tapping the word chapter, you can scroll through that table of contents. So if you're someone who listens to audiobooks and reads ebooks, uh, you'll find the, uh, the experience very similar. So it's not too confusing. I'm going to tap play, and I honestly don't know if it's going to play my audio or not. So I might turn down my volume. <laughs> there we go. Because uh, the one thing, the other thing I want to mention in, oh, let me just mute it. There we go. Um, the other thing that's great about um, the experience is that for placing a bookmark and highlighting, we talked about the long press with the ebook where you press and leave your finger on a word and then drag it. Um, with an audiobook, it's very similar, only you're going to come up to that little bookmark icon in the upper right corner. And instead, of, if you wanted to add a bookmark, you would simply tap it. And you'll see this little bookmark icon now in the little piano down at the bottom. But if I wanted to highlight, I could press and hold my finger on that bookmark icon. And you'll see after a second or two, it's going to glow to be this yellow circle. Um, and I, I still have my finger pressed down on it. And when I let go, okay, it's going to add that highlighted section to that little piano down at the bottom. So just something that you might not be aware of and might not even accidentally discover, but if you wanted to highlight using an audiobook, uh, that feature is there as well. To access all of your, and I'm in the upper right corner now, sorry, to access all of your um, bookmarks and highlights, it's the same symbol, it's those bookmarks stacked on top of each other. Um, you can tap on that and see any bookmarks or highlights that you've made throughout the entire book and quickly navigate to them. One of the other features that's great about the audiobook that is not in the ebook is the sleep timer. All right, so I'm just going to hide that and show you. It's this little moon icon, okay, to indicate the sleep timer. Um, Right now it's turned off, but if I wanted to listen for 15 minutes, if I was laying in bed and knew I would fall asleep, I could turn on a 15, 15 minute sleep timer or end of the chapter. Um, there's other things you can do too, uh, 30 minutes, 60, and then over on the right hand side, you can fine tune it quite a bit. So if I know I'm probably gonna make it another 45 minutes, uh, I can fine tune it using this slider by dragging it up and down with my finger. I'm going to, oh, actually, let me hide that and show you then when it's turned on, you'll see that moon filled in and you'll see how long your sleep timer is set for. I'm going to turn it off for today. And to do that, I'll just tap off and hide. And now it's back to our little moon. And then last but certainly not least, the my favorite feature of listening to audiobooks is that you can adjust the speed that the reader reads at. So the current speed is just going to be the normal, the default, but um, some speakers, some readers are very, very slow. Um, and so I find myself speeding up their reading quite a bit. Um, again, there's some presets that you can simply tap on or the current book I'm listening to, I found that a 1.4 speed, it works pretty well. I can still understand the reader. He doesn't sound like a chipmunk. Um, and I still kind of can follow along with him. So um, it sometimes will depend on the reader. Sometimes will depend on the listener. I know my office mate, she listens to every book at the 2.0 speed. Um, if I have a book that's going to be due soon, I might speed it up a little faster than what I would normally prefer to listen to it. But knowing that it's going to be removed from my device, I might try to finish it before it disappears. Um, so just know you've got a little control with your speed on that. Once you found a speed, it's going to stay that speed until you change it. Right? 
Okay, so I think we're almost ready to pause for a break. So let me go, let me back out of this. And any questions, I've seen the chat kind of pop up a couple times. So um, we've got a couple Haley, great questions. What, what questions can we try to answer? In fact, if you can go back into that book that you were just in, um, there, one of the questions was, what is the little fingerprint next to the X? Are you muted, Haley? Oh. Can you hear me? Not hearing anything. I'm going to open the chat. Okay. Casey, can you hear me? Just opening the chat. And Haley, I'm not able to hear. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> can you hear us now? Yes, I had my. That's why I didn't mute my. <laughs> I remember that happening last time. Okay, sorry. What is what? What are the questions? Hey, um, the first question is good. If you can go back into that book that you were just in, um, one of the questions was, "What is the little fingerprint next to the X?" Oh, good question. Okay, so this is going to be any recent places. So imagine it's like um, I'm just going to tap on that. Um, so any places you've recently been in that book. Um, that's what it's showing you. So I kind of think of it as like, it's kind of gross in COVID times, but like when you lick your finger and turn the page, um, <laughs> kind of that little fingerprint <laughs> is how I remember that in my head. Um, and that'll tell you like some, if you listen to a book for two hours, um, it'll just have that last spot you were at. So, but if you listen to a book for two seconds, it'll also have that one. So that's what that is. And to get out of it, you can just, if you don't want to look at it, you can just tap that X. Perfect. Another question that came in was, if you read in the Kindle app, does it disappear from the Kindle library on the due date? Yes, it does. Um, so that's a great, great, great question because we didn't actually talk about the Kindle app. Um, so Kindle, the Kindle app is also linked with your Amazon account. And how ebooks and audiobooks work, digital content, is they have um, what's called uh, digital rights management software embedded in it. We use the short term, the acronym DRM, DRM. Um, so that DRM is coded to only uh, be available for 14 days or whatever your checkout period is. And once that 14 day period is over, um, it is removed from your device. So that's okay. that's the answer to that. There are, there have been reports, <laughs> I'll say, um, of, you know, turning off your Wi-Fi and then you can keep it on for a little bit longer. It kind of depends on your device. Like I can't turn my Wi-Fi off on my phone because uh, then I still have cell service. And so anything on my phone still disappears. Uh, but I have had a friend tell me that she's turned off her Wi-Fi on her iPad uh, and she can finish her book for another day or two. She did tell me just this week that it actually like didn't work all of a sudden. It used to work and now it doesn't. So it's not something I'll recommend to people, but if you want to play around with that option, uh, you can. But yes, the Amazon also knows through your Kindle app that your book is only good for 14 days. Okay. Good question. Yeah, and the last question that came in will actually, oh, here, here's one other question and then the last question will lead us into our next section. Awesome. Um, can you read a book in this, I'm sorry, can you renew a book in the same way you do a real book? Just give the library card number. So that's something we addressed a little earlier. But. Yes. Yeah, that's a really good question, too. So your loans, um, here where it says manage loan, if I tap on that, if there's no option to renew, uh, and let me just make start from the beginning, sorry, you can only renew ebooks and audiobooks through Libby three days before the due date. That is a little bit different than our regular print collection. Um, our regular print collection, if you check out a book today, you can renew it tomorrow. You'll only have one extra day. Um, so you're only renewing from the day you check it out going forward two weeks. Uh, but that is an option with our print collection. With Libby and all of our digital content, you only even see the renew option 72 hours before your book is due. Um, if 
you might see that it's grayed out like this, like it might say renew loan. In fact, let me do a different title. There we go. This is a better example. Um, that one's a lot, the one before was one of the lucky day ones, which are non-renewable no matter what. But if I wanted to renew this book, it's not due for another 11 days. But when I tap manage loan, if I tap renew loan and I scroll down, it's going to tell me it's too early to renew this loan and that I have to wait eight more days before I can try to renew it. At that point, as long as nobody has a hold on it, I will be able to renew it. It'll give me that little option instead of the um, time glass or time, I'm sorry, blanking on the name of that thing. Hourglass. <laughs> Hourglass, thank you. Um, yeah, did that answer the question? I think so. Okay. And then our last two questions are actually about um, holds. One of them is, can you pause holds? And the other is, do you get an alert when your on hold book is available? I think you're going to be addressing those two questions in our next section. Yes, those are great segues. Thanks for asking. Sure. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to our shelf. And to do that, I just tapped shelf on the bottom right corner. Um, now we talked about loans and then I'm, I'm glad to hear other people are so passionate about managing their holds as I am because it's, it really is an art form and there's no, there's no, <laughs> there's not that much science to it, but, um, so let's dive in, um, to look at your holds and to kind of oversee your holds, you're just going to tap holds and here it's going to give you an overview of the status of your holds. Um, so I actually had two holds come available. I put them on hold earlier this week and they came up really quick. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute um, where it says borrow and you can see where it says ready to borrow up at the top. Um, I did receive an alert. We'll talk about alerts in another, in the next section also, but I did just so you know, and it, to answer that question, I did receive an alert to let me know my hold is available. Um, if your hold's not available, and again, you kind of are trying to juggle them so that you get them all at the right time and have time to read them, um, you do have this little estimate, just like you did when you place the hold. So if you're kind of figuring, hmm, I placed that hold a week or two ago, I wonder how much progress I've made, um, you can come to this hold section and tap on it and you will be able to see um, you've still got about three weeks left, uh, generally. You're four in line and there's two copies. And to, tap, to get out of that, I'm just going to tap outside of that little pop-up. Um, so that is kind of how you have a general idea on what holds you have and, and when they'll be available. When a hold is available, okay, let's cover that first. So these two holds are available and I have the option to either borrow, manage hold, or deliver later. Um, if I tap borrow, and I'm going to do this since I have two, I can show you guys both. If I have borrow, um, I'm just going to tap borrow. And now I've checked out that book. Right? Let me go back to my holds and we'll talk about the other one. All right, so that's one option and that's what most of us are going to do. Maybe. I shouldn't even say that. <laughs> that's, um, when your hold is ready and you get an alert, you go into the Libby and you borrow it, you'll tap borrow. Um, manage hold is another option. So if you wanted to cancel your hold, maybe you got a physical copy from the library, maybe you put the audiobook and the ebook on hold at the same time and one came up and you want to cancel the other hold, um, you can also cancel your hold then and then that would remove it and you'd lose your place in line, hopefully because you've already gotten it. The other option is deliver later. Um, so you get your notification, you realize like, I just don't have time to read it right now. You do have the option to deliver later. And here, if you tap deliver later, um, you can actually decide when to try again. So maybe you want to do it a week. Uh, you can go all the way up to 180 days. Um, and that's just for this particular title. Okay. So um, that is an option that you have. It's a wonderful feature because as many of you probably know, when it rains, it pours, um, and it's either you've got nothing, and then all of a sudden all of your holds come in together, 
Um, so this is how you can adjust it there. I will go ahead and do, let's do 10 days and I will tap update hold. All right, and now I've scheduled it for a later delivery. I'm gonna go back to my holds and now it's telling me deliver after February 1st. It's not gonna give it to me necessarily on February 1st. It's just, I don't wanna have it offered to me until at least February, at the earliest February 1st, okay? Someone might have already checked it out and it's not gonna shorten their two week checkout to accommodate my February 1st. It's just a, please don't give this to me until at least February 1st. The other thing I'll mention that I love about Libby is that without doing anything, if I missed that hold, um, so just like at the library, if you place a physical book on hold, um, we ask that you come in within three days to pick it up. Otherwise, we just are assuming you no longer want it and no action needs to be done on your part. We will take it off of the hold shelf and put it back into circulation. Libby does the same thing. So you've got three days to, to check it out once you get your notification. However, if you don't check it out, if you don't tap that borrow button like we saw just a minute ago with the Malcolm Gladwell book, you will still keep your place at number one in line. It'll just go to the number two person. And then the next time a copy is available, you'll get a notification saying, um, your hold's ready again. Uh, they call it holds lapsed. So when your hold lapses, that's hard to say, um, you'll still keep your place in line. Um, that's where you might want to go in and cancel your hold, your hold if, you, if you don't need it anymore. You're not doing any harm. You're just kind of it's keeping it on hold for you for three days. Uh, but as someone who constantly misses my holds, or at least did with our previous app, um, this is a wonderful feature to be able to not miss my place in line just because I forgot about it or the notification came and I clicked on it and got distracted by something else. So that is the deliver later feature and also the holds lapsed feature. And Casey, yeah. if I can interrupt, sure. just to clarify, um, the holds lapse feature, it only allows your hold to lapse one time. Is that correct? Yes, that's exactly right. So it's a so one-time offer. For you're allowed time. to miss it once. And then if you miss that same book a second time, it's just assuming that you don't want it anymore. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, good, thank you. All right, so that is just a little bit on the holds. The one other thing to talk about, let me tap on action. So up in the upper right corner, there's actions. So synchronizing your shelf is good. Um, it's basically just hitting the refresh button. Um, so I'm gonna tap synchronize. It'll just kind of refresh. If you're working off of a few different devices, it'll just make sure that it has the latest version. Uh, but I did just wanna also mention that there's an option to suspend all holds. Uh, life happens and sometimes if, if there's anything that the last 10, 12 months have taught us, it's that sometimes life just has to get put on hold. And if that's the case, rather than individually suspending this hold or that hold, um, if you just know you will not be able to read anything, um, you can suspend your hold again for anywhere between one and 180 days. Um, and you'll just suspend them all. And then when you tap update holds, um, it's going to place all those holes and not deliver any to you. Okay. Um, so just know that that's an option too. Like if you're a big holds queue manager and then whatever, um, that is there for you to utilize. Okay, I'm gonna talk about tags real quick, but then after that, I'll break for questions and then we're almost done. Thanks so much for sticking with us. I was really trying to keep this one tight, um, but it's a lot of content. Okay, so we talked about loans. We're back on our shelf. We've talked about loans, we've talked about holds, and now we'll talk about tags. Um, so as a reminder, when we were in the library and browsing the collection and searching the collection, we, I added a few tags, the thumbs up, the thumbs down, the little stack of books. I created my own tag using the word cookbook. Um, and to access those tags is 
is where you'll go here because it's your shelf, your interests, your interactions with the collections will tap tags. And these tags don't make any sense. It's just nonsense, but just to kind of show you what the feature looks like and where to then access it, uh, this is where you'll do that. So if I want to go through and see like all the, all the cookbooks that I've tagged, uh, uh, when I have time to cook whatever day, I can go through and look at them here. Great. Um, so that is all about tags. Okay, so pause and I can hear you. So that's good. Um, Haley, what, what other questions do we have about holds and tags? Well, the only question we've got so far for this portion is going to lead us right into our next section, which okay. is do you get notifications via text message? Oh, that's such a good question. Oh <laughs> man. Um, yes, and I, that's right, I didn't fully answer the notifications question from the previous one either, but it's all kind of tied in together. Um, okay, so last call before we move on. Oh, here's another question that's come in. Okay. It says, what does no date available mean in holds? I'm not sure. Take a look. I'm trying to see if they if that if that was something on our. Hmm. Uh, go ahead and um, take a screenshot. If the person who asked that question, if you could take a screenshot and then email it to me, um, mm -hmm. I'll see if I can help answer that. And if I I and I to be honest, I just don't know. Um, I feel like maybe I have seen that before, uh, but I can always go to Overdrive and ask them. That's the great thing. They're we're really helpful for us too. So good question. I'm sorry, I can't answer. Might that be a book on order? It might be. If a book on, yeah. If a book on order, we usually have a date ready. Um, so like, one of the curated lists at the beginning when we talked about library was February books. I'll just show you guys since we're, it's so easy to navigate. You guys are pros, like top titles of February. A lot of these are not even out yet, um, but we can still place a hold. Let me try actually and see. All right, I just placed a hold on a book that's not even out yet. And maybe it's a little further out, oops. Holds over six months. Mm. I'm not sure. I mean, those are, those are all good good questions and good guesses, but um, it's not. It's ringing a bell, but it's. I'm not able to picture exactly where I've seen that or in what reference to. So, uh, shoot me a screenshot. I'm. I'm so curious. <laughs> Okay, All right. we have no further questions except for the one about notifications. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so last but not least, we talked about library. We're, we're on shelf. We talked about shelf. We talked about library. Just click on it twice to get back to the main library. Uh, but you'll notice no matter where I am, whether I'm on my shelf or in library, in the upper right corner, I have my little Libby. Um, and that's going to be where we'll finish today with our settings and our preferences. Um, so when you tap on the little icon, you're going to see your notifications at the top. And here's where we'll get into notifications a little bit more. Um, I wish I had a notification because if there's a notification, this little Libby girl um, will have a little number with how many notifications you have. And I think she'll even be maroon. Let me look at my phone real quick. Because I have tons of notifications all the time. Yes. Um, so there'll be a little maroon number. Like if you have one notification, it'll be like the number one in a little maroon circle or the number four. I've got four notifications right now on my phone. Um, so a little um, maroon. And that's, that's just kind of your cue to tap on it she wants to let you know like hey there's four things that need your attention um, they're going to be right here and you'll scroll through them um, and as you scroll from them you'll the number will disappear um, the very last thing you'll scroll through is this manage notification so the notifications will appear right here in front of this and you'll kind of swipe your finger across 
to go through and read those notifications. Um, to manage your notifications, all right, and here's where we're gonna actually answer the question about do you get notifications and how. Um, the, you can set your notifications in this section. So if you have a loan expiring, do you want a little heads up? Um, I think I have, a, I, I have this turned on. Um, if you wanna turn it off, you'll do ignore. But the way the notifications are delivered will vary. Um, and I, I don't mean this to be confusing. So I'm kind of hiding this email notice because you, you won't see that on yours. Um, menu badge. So ignore is one option if you want to turn those notifications off. Um, menu badge is the option where it's kind of like a pop up where you know how if you get a text message, it'll just light up in, in your screen. Um, that's what a menu badge notification is. And does that, that says it on, on the Libby phone app, right? It says menu badge. I'm just opening mine right now. It does. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So when I have, I have mindset to give you, give me a menu badge. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. Notification on the right hand side. That's going to be your notification setting. Um, so if you want those messages like a text message, you're going to set all of these to be your notification, which is the green column. And that's why this is the only part where I, I don't like teaching it this way because my, my screen says something different than yours. Um, that's because I'm actually on a computer, not on my, not on a mobile device. And so there's a different option there. There's an option for email. Um, but on my phone, I have all of these, this last column checked, and that's when I get those pop-ups like I do a text message. So that is the delivery. It's not a text message. It's not an SMS text message, which is a great question, and it's a really great option, but that green right-hand column that all these are checked on, it looks the exact same as a text message. In fact, it's even better because if you, when you tap on it, it will open up Libby and bring you right to the borrow screen. So that when you're hold ready, all you do is tap on that notification. If you are about to miss it, it's gonna give you like, not that long, I'll be honest. I wanna say less than an hour. It'll give you a notification saying, hey, your hold's about to lapse. Do you wanna check it out? So if you want those notifications, you'll check that box. If you don't, then you'll turn that notification off. And then if you miss your hold, um, that's that final notification there, the holds, hold lapsed. Um, so those are the different, that's how you set your notifications um, and that's where you set them to. There is a way for, the, for anyone who really wants email notifications, there is a way to set your email notifications through the OverDrive website. Um, so if that is something you really want, it's not going to be through Libby, it's going to be through the OverDrive website and you would get an email saying your hold is ready to check out and then you could just open Libby and check out your loan from there. I don't like to get too in the weeds of that because there's a lot of different options and it's a little confusing, but if you have questions about that, feel free to email me or, um, or if, I, if I can repeat anything. I'd be happy to try. So that's a little bit about the notification. In fact, now we have a little, a little icon there um, with a notification I can show you. Oh, she's, she's prompting me to manage my notifications. Uh, but now you can see how you swipe through it. And this is gonna be the last one. Some of you have multiple library cards from different libraries. Um, we know we have a lot of people with multiple residences who live here in Martin County. You might live here part of the year and not all the year. Um, and so one of the great things about Libby is that you can easily switch back and forth between libraries. Um, so to do that, if I had multiple libraries, I would see um, St. Lucie County Library System right below Martin County or right above it, whatever, however you added it. Um, so just know that if you wanted to add another library system, you would come here and tap add a library. And then just like before, we would type in New York Public Library. 
um, and we can tap on it and add it. And once again, it's going to ask you for your library card number and whatever um, password or credentials you need from that particular library. Each library sets their own, but you would have to type in there too before you can borrow. All right, and then just to go back into our notifications, one or two more things. Um, we talked about our libraries and adding a library, but here is where if you had more than one library card, you could add your other library card. So I'm gonna tap see library cards. And remember, we could have done this at the beginning, um, but if we wanted to, if we didn't have one then or just weren't ready, we could add another card here. It's gonna bring you through the exact same process. And you know what, let me just add in my card. Okay, and I'm gonna tap next. And my pin is, oh goodness. Okay, and you guys can't judge me on <laughs> what I'm reading right now. Um, but you'll see your card again, you'll have that same option to rename it and tap next. And now you've got your two cards. Let me hide this screen because I also want to show you those notifications. See how now that I have two cards, because I have quite a few notifications for my personal library card. Um, now that I see that, I just want to show you how to swipe through them. So not only do I get the pop-up on my Libby, on my phone, excuse me, when I have my notification, um, I also have the little notification right here. What If I open Libby and check it, she's like almost yelling at me like, hey, your hold is ready. Um, it's pretty hard to miss uh, unless you have everything turned off. Um, here's that hold, that's, this is actually a great example of my hold, lap, hold lapsing. Um, I missed it. I didn't check it out in the three-day period, but they're going to deliver it again later. And if I, if I wanted to show you actually deliver later, you can actually choose like, oh, hey, actually, can you, can you deliver, can I save my number one spot and you deliver it to me in 20 days? Um, and then I update my hold and now that that's ready. Uh, let me just briefly show you now any holds. Yeah, so that deliver later. Now with my own personal stuff, it kind of beefs up the content a little bit more. And that's how you um, see your library card. If you were to check something out, you can choose which card to check it out on. It's gonna be part of the borrow process, um, not for holds, but if I go to the library and wanna check something out, it's gonna give me the option of which card I wanna check it out on, all right? So those of you with multiple cards or care, you help other people with their stuff, um, it's pretty easy to switch back and forth. Um, last but not least, there is help available um, within Libby. Um, if you want help, you can just tap on get some help and then there's some FAQs in here. And then if you need help on um, holds and maybe the library's closed, maybe it's midnight and you're frustrated and stuck and really wanna check out your book and you can't do it, um, you can always search Libby if you don't wanna wait to call us in the morning. So uh, just so you know that that is available uh, right from this, again, this notification section of Libby. I'm gonna hide that and then go ahead and pause. And while I wait for any questions from Haley, I'm gonna just make sure I didn't miss anything in my notes. Okay, so this will be our last chance for our attendees to submit questions using the chat function at the bottom of their screen. We don't have any questions quite yet. All right, I'm going to turn my video back on then since we're, since I'll try to just answer the last few questions. Otherwise, I'll say thanks for hanging in there with us. This class is, like I said, there's a lot to cover. Um, you had some really great questions. Haley, could you do me a huge favor and write down that question about the um, date no, not available? Mm -hmm. Yep, I've got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it doesn't look like we have any, any, other, any additional questions coming in. You must have covered everything. 
Okay. Well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip back over to our PowerPoint because I do just want to leave on a couple final notes and um, just kind of review what we covered. All right. How's my sharing? Does it look okay? Perfect. All right. So um, Libby's obviously our new app for checking out ebooks and audiobooks and now magazines too. We're very excited about you can download Libby for free from the App Store, Apple App Store, or Google Play Store. You'll log in with that uh, library card number, okay, that long one on the back of your library underneath the barcode um, with no spaces and your PIN, which is the last four digits of your library card number. If you don't know it, try that. Or sorry, the last four digits of your telephone number, the phone number that we have on file. That's what you'll log in with for your PIN. We talked about all different kinds of functionality and features. Um, how to read, how to listen, and then we talked about how to manage your loans and return books and use the tags. Um, okay, we, ha we did have a question come in, Casey. Wonderful, um, if I can answer it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the question is, why are some books in a series not available? Oh, that's a great question. Um, we might not have a digital copy of it. Uh, for whatever reason, we might just not have purchased it or, um, or it may have been checked out a certain number of times. Yeah, and we might need to repurchase it. Um, uh, Ebook licensing, as I kind of explained to you, is kind of interesting with the digital rights management, the DRM. Um, not only can only one person check it out at a time, but some publishers have limitations on the number of times a book can be checked out before the library has to repurchase it. Um, so a lot of publishers use 26 times. So once a book, because ostensibly a digital copy is never going to fall apart like a physical copy is or get lost. Mm -hmm. um, and so to compensate for that, publishers have say, will say, okay, this book has been checked out 26 times. You need to now buy another copy. Um, and so there might just be a day or two that we miss it. Um, Jeanette Noe, our collections manager, is on top of it when it comes to stuff like that. Um, but that does bring up a good point. If you see a, a book that you would like to read that the title's not available, um, you can request that the library purchase it, just like you would for a regular print book. Uh, we have a purchase suggestion option. Um, you can't request books to be purchased through Libby, but you can go to the Martin County Library's OverDrive website and submit your purchase suggestions there. Um, how it works is you'll search for it, and if it doesn't come up with in our library, it'll be like right below, and I believe the section says like, want to request this title or something along those lines, and then mm -hmm. um, you'll request the book, you'll type in your email, and the great thing is, is if the library buys it, you'll be the first person who gets the notification. You'll automatically be put on the holds queue. Uh, and then as soon as the library purchases it, you'll, you'll get the first shot. So um, not something you can do through Libby, which is why we don't talk about it today, but um, that is definitely something that we want to know if, if we want our books to represent what our readers want, want to read. So please let us know. Absolutely. Okay. Looks Great like question. no more questions. Okay. Well, as a reminder, um, you can always give us a call, like I said, we're so good with with Libby now. Like our staff has really done a great job of learning it, and and the reason we learn it is because you come to us with your weird or quirky questions that we have never seen before, and so we have the opportunity to figure that out um, most of the time with Libby because Libby's a very stable um, and wonderful app. Um, not like our last one, which I won't say the name of, but <laughs> um, most of our questions really only take five or 10 minutes for us to answer um, if you bring in your device. So feel free to give us a call. Um, maybe we can help you over the phone. It's kind of tricky sometimes with we can't see what you're seeing. Um, so we do encourage people to bring it in or call ahead. We have funny hours right now. The library is still closing every day. Midday, every branch has a slightly different schedule, but we close for two hours in the middle of every day so we can sanitize the entire building. Um, so if you want to come in and aren't sure if we're going to be closed or not, feel free to give us a call. 
Um, and the other thing that I'm pleased to announce is that um, we're slowly re, um, reopening opportunities for our free 30 minute tech appointments. Um, this is an opportunity for you to get any tech questions, like if you have a specific barrier that you um, have come across and you're stuck, um, and it's not something maybe we could help you with in five or 10 minutes. Um, we are resuming our previously um, previous service of these tech appointments. Um, they're actually being booked through our online calendar now these days. So if you go on our website, um, not all branches are doing it quite yet. We're still figuring out the logistics, but um, I did want to take this opportunity because I know that's something that helped a lot of people and we want to we want to help you if we can. Um, so uh, know that that option is is coming back. If not in full swing, then uh, at least kind of trickling back in uh, for for the future. Otherwise, um, I will go ahead and say goodbye and thank you and oh, only 33 minutes over. Uh, thanks for hanging in there and uh, have a great day and expect to hear from me. If you don't hear from me by Wednesday um, with a link to this, it means I didn't have your correct email address or it went into your spam folder. So I will definitely have this sent uh, by Wednesday at the latest. So. Thanks so much. Thank you, Haley, for all your help um, and your great moderating skills. <laughs> and um, two weeks from now, we're going to do 3D printing. So if you want to join us, registration's open. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Happy meeting. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks very much. <laughs>